Well, have you ever wondered why some people seem to effortlessly manifest their dreams, while others struggle to make lasting changes in their lives? What if I told you that the answer lies in understanding quantum physics? and the power of energy and vibration. So what is quantum physics, right? Quantum physics is revolutionizing science, spirituality, because what quantum physics is about is really the essence of spirituality, right? It's realizing that everything in the universe is interconnected. That, that we live in this energy field of vibration and everything within us, our cells, our body, our spirit, our, our, our emotions are all vibrations. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is how can we learn to capture these vibrations and use these vibrations to live powerful, meaningful lives. Yeah. All right? Quantum physics and spirituality are the same thing. They're one and one. It's no wonder, you know, we've talked forever about affirmations and meditation and denials and all these spiritual practices that we have. And now science is proving that they're true, right? They're proving that prayer works. Right? Not because we're accessing some being up in the cloud somewhere, but because we're changing the vibration within us. We're changing the way we interact with each other, with the universe, with all life. And when we do that, it brings us into harmony with the truth of who we are, with the essence of who we are. You know, the, the law, law of vibration states that everything is in motion that the frequency at which we vibrate determines the experiences that we have and what we create. So if we vibrate at a low frequency, we tend to attract what? Negative people. Negative circumstances that match the energy of our vibration. On the other hand, if we're able to lift our vibration, to raise our vibration and operate at a higher level, we find that we attract people that are positive, we attract people that are, that are um, um, loving, we attract things into our life that match that vibration. Don't you know that's true? Haven't you known, maybe you've never thought of it that way, but don't you recognize that that's true? Right? And isn't it amazing that it's true? You know, and, and becoming aware that we have this power, becoming aware that you have this power, you can change, you can transform, you can open yourself to fuller, more loving experiences of life, of progress, of improvement, of spirit, of manifestation. And our affirmation and our phrase that pays today is, I come alive as I raise my vibe. Say it with me. I come alive as I raise my vibe. The second concept that we're looking at today in quantum physics is the observer effect. Right? Quantum physicists are finding that when, we, when they observe particles, that those particles respond to the observation, yes. right? And in the same way, when we, um, when we respond to our lives with love, when we raise our vibration, we tend to attract more of the things that we desire. In fact, we, 
we really enable the presence of spirit that's within us and within the universe to recognize what it is that we truly desire. And then we think, speak, feel in alignment with those things which attracts more of the things that we desire to us because of the frequency that we're embracing and that we're embodying. So our intentions, our thoughts, our beliefs have a direct impact on our reality and what we experience. And Unity's taught that for over 125 years. We've known that. And now science is saying, by golly, you guys are right. Right? They're proving this stuff that we just thought was, you know, some people think it's just spiritual woo-woo, right? But it's actual truth that we can create our lives based upon our vibration, which is infected by what we think about, what we feel, the words that we say, and the attitude with which we face our lives. Another fundamental pro, uh, principle in quantum physics is the entanglement principle. And this principle says that everything is connected. Everything is connected. We are all connected to each other, with the, with the energy of life, connected to the universe. And what we think what we say, what we do has a ripple effect on the universe, on our world, and in all, on all life. So this is really giving us some tremendous responsibility, right? Because now that we know that we have that power, we get to choose whether we use it or not. Yeah? yeah? yeah. Are you up to giving it a shot today? Yeah. <laughs> right? Because... You know, it's, it's like we live in this universe, which is kind of like our garden, right? And we get to interact with this garden in the same way that we might interact with our garden at home or with our plants at home. Anybody have plants at home or a garden at home? Right? If you, a couple, I know more than two of you do. Okay. So what happens if you ignore those plants? What happens if you don't water them? What happens if you don't fertilize them? They die. It's the same with how we get to experience life. If we water, if we fertilize our inner garden, what it produces brings more life, brings more joy, brings more passion, brings more peace. So today we're going to look at how can we how can we water our garden? What can we do to fertilize our garden? Anybody interested in knowing that? Because you're going to leave here with your own water bottle, even though you make it up in your mind, and so in your own fertilizer, so you can go home and fertilize your inner garden. So I come alive as I raise my vibe. How do I do that? Well, the first practice that we're going to talk about today is to slow yourself down. So take a breath. Let's slow ourselves down. Doesn't mean do nothing, but it means to slow ourselves down. You know, the, the presence of spirit that we have access to isn't as accessible if we're moving fast, doing this, taking that, right? That, that knowledge comes when? When we slow ourselves down. We have to open ourselves up to the presence of spirit that is here all the time and wants to manifest in and through us. But if we are in such a hurry, we can't let this presence in. So the invitation today is to take time to slow yourself down, even if it's five or ten minutes a day, just to consciously make that choice, just to slow down, just to be present. You know, 
when we slow ourselves down, we raise our vibrational frequency, right? That frequency needs to slow down so that we can listen. A lot of our minds are thinking thought after thought after thought, right? I think I read that we, we have, on the average, about 60,000 thoughts a day, right? And if we're, in, if we're engaged in every one of those thoughts, we're liable to go crazy, right? Anybody ever feel like that, chasing these thoughts around? What if we just slow ourselves down? You know, a person who struggles with anxiety and self-doubt might look like this. Ever felt like that? Probably, probably because you're not giving yourself enough time to slow down and just be, relax. And e- even as I'm talking today, breathe, breathe. You don't have to do anything right now. You don't even have to remember all this because I'm going to give you a piece of paper when it's all over. You can take home and apply it at, at your own slow pace. I love, um, I love this T-shirt. Uh, as you know, uh, Emily and I were just on uh, Kauai last week, and there is a shop titled Slow Yourself Down. And the woman who created this shop um, came up with this saying and made this T-shirt. In fact, Emily purchased this very same T-shirt from the store, and it kind of what, what inspired this part of the talk, and to just remember, to help us to remember to slow yourself down, right? We've been, I think our society uh, and our culture teaches us that we have to be going and thinking and doing all the time, and there's a time and a place for that. But if we really want to operate at our highest vibrational level, We need to sometimes slow down and just be present to this moment, right? Oh, and I, we went to Waimea Canyon. Anybody been to Waimea Canyon? Wow, this is this was a an amazing place just to embrace the beauty of this canyon. And we took a you know like a short fifteen minute hike to get to this place in the canyon, and it was viewable from the path, the trail that we were on. And it just kind of reminds me to to slow down, to take a breath. We stood there, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes maybe, and just appreciated the amazing beauty that was right there. And we can do this in our lives, just to to tend our garden, to find time just to slow down, appreciate what's here right now. Mm. I come alive as I raise my vibe. The second practice that we can use is to, to raise our vibrational frequency is to be in awe and wonder. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just to, to stop and as, as part of the, you know, as part of slowing yourself down, just to be in awe and wonder at the magnificence that's in your life. You know, the, when you're with your partner, when you're with your friends, when you're with people you love, when you're by yourself, when you're looking at yourself in the mirror, yes, even then, just to be in awe and wonder, just appreciate. You know, appreciation is one of the fastest moving principles in the universe. Because when we are appreciating what we have, we send a signal to the universe, which is energy, of course, it's that vibration we're talking about, and the universe says, oh, you appreciate. Things are good for you. 
Well, how would you like some more? Would you like some more love? Would you like some more peace? Would you like some more joy? Would you like some more understanding? Ah, And as it comes, just be in awe and wonder. Hmm. Here's a friend of mine who um, doesn't look to me like he's experiencing a whole lot of awe and wonder, yeah? The potential is there. And I notice that he, you know, no wonder he's all messed up. His two clocks in that picture have different time. So that kind of reminds me to set your clock to universal time, right? Take time to be in awe and wonder and just appreciate where you are, who you are, what you have. Just breathe into it. And we can go from being like that person to a person who is in awe and wonder, maybe even being in a Waimea Canyon. Might even be like this woman on the beach. Take time to be like that. Take, go, go to the beach or someplace and write down the things that you're grateful for. Write down the things that you're in awe and wonder for, right? Send that signal to the universe about how grateful you are, how loved you are, how joyful you are, how peaceful you are. Take a breath with me. Let's see if we can find that place right now. We're not going to go in meditation, but I just invite you to feel that right now, just to feel that awe and wonder of this moment. That you get to be here with loving, like-minded people that have a lot of the same philosophies and ideas and beliefs as you. People who are also living in awe and wonder. Or maybe you'd like to be like this woman, sitting in a garden with a cup of tea or your favorite beverage. And just smelling it. Have you ever like, like had a really nice cup of tea and you smell the fragrance of it? Have you ever done that? Yeah. And, and don't you find that it just kind of encapsulates you, right? And embraces you. Well, take, take time to do that. Because when you are doing that, you are raising your vibrational frequency. You're connecting with the allness, connecting with love, connecting with yourself, with the peace and joy that's within you. I come alive as I raise my vibe. And let's let's say that. Just imagine that you're sitting someplace You're in your garden. And let's just say that, holding that idea. Let's say it together. I come alive as I raise my vibe. And the third practice that we can use to raise our vibrational frequency is letting go. Another one of the, all of these things are so... They're principles that act so fast, right? As soon as we release low vibe energy like resentment and anger, things change. So this principle is really about letting go, right? letting go of hurt. If somebody has hurt you or said something wrong to you or said something that hurt your feelings, Just let it go. Sometimes we think we have to defend ourselves, don't we? That we have to strike back when somebody says something that hurts us. And the truth of it is, as you know, nothing in spirit, nothing that anyone says or does has any effect on us unless we let it. Unless we give them permission to have those words hurt us. 
And, and you have that choice just not to let that happen. Don't give somebody that kind of power over you. Hmm. You know, when we, when we let go, we create a space for healing. If we're hanging on to resentment or hurt or anger, it acts as a wall that keeps us from experiencing the truth of who we are. It's like we, we push, when we're holding on to resentment, to anger, to fear, to hurt, we're pushing away the love that wants to be there for us. And in a sense, we're saying, oh, no, thank you. I'm choosing to stick to my guns, to hold on to my anger, because it feels powerful, right? And let's face it, it does feel powerful, but it's limited power because it takes your power away. So take a breath with me. Just feel what this means to let go. Let go of the feeling of being left out. So many times we put walls up when something that somebody says to us, we interpret it as as a zing or a hurt. And if we could just let that go. Rarely is it ever something we have to defend. Just let it go. I love what uh, Jack Cornfield says. He said, let go, to let go does not mean to get rid of. To let go means to let be. When we, when we let be with compassion, things come and go on their own. Just let it be. So many times we don't have to be upset. Just let it be. Imagine this person, or feel like this person carrying this cloud of resentment. And we sometimes do that, right? Something can happen, we hold on to this cloud of resentment, and it's like this cloud around our head that that keeps stuff away from us, right? Keeps things away from us, keeps love away from us, keeps people away from us. And we develop this attitude of anger and frustration and uh, anxiousness. And it's so unnecessary. We can let go of all that stuff and be like this guy. Be free, standing on the edge of life, observing, being a part of it, loving it, experiencing it to the fullness. You know, as we, as we let go of grudges and, and show compassion for ourselves, it takes this huge weight off of our shoulders. And we start to feel lighter, at peace. And we raise our vibrational frequency. (sighs) You know, being in this space of letting go helps us to approach new challenges with joy and peace. If we don't let this stuff go, We can find that even the slightest look or the slightest thing that somebody might say is going to pow! It's like we got slapped in the face, right? Because it compounds, right? We've compounded that frustration, that anxious energy. But if we can just learn to let go, we we become immune to it. Hmm. And you're going, yeah, Rev, letting go sounds easy, but it's not so easy, right? And it's true. It takes practice. Letting go is a spiritual practice that we get to practice. And so when we find ourselves, when our, we start to find our head expanding, you ever feel that way? And it feels like all the blood in our body is going to our head. That's a signal that it's time to let go. And it will transform your life 
and ra- as you raise your vibrational frequency. <sighs> Feel that happening. I come alive as I raise my vibe, right? Because when we let go of all this stuff, it's like the, we can gather this energy of the universe and it's there to support us, to love us, right? We come alive because that truth becomes known to us. We come alive and we raise our vibe. And the fourth practice that we can use to raise our vibrational frequency is affirmations. And I can imagine that all of us use affirmations or have used them from time to time. And so my encouragement today is to use them on a more regular basis. In fact, all of this stuff is to use them on a more regular basis because that's truly the way we're going to raise our vibration. You know, affirmations are powerful positive statements that, tr- that state that which we are and that which we desire. And affirmations have this incredible ability to actually create new neural pathways in our brains, right? Because when we focus on an affirmation and we state it, our, our brains take that energy and they build new neural pathways to embrace the truth statements that we're making. And, they, and in doing so, it helps to attract the positive results that we are looking for. Now, I discovered affirmations probably 30 years ago. And man, I was all excited about them, right? I, in fact, maybe you did too. Read the book, The, the Secret, right? And um, I've talked to Michael Beckwith about this book. And he said, he, you know, the energy that went in that book and all of it was tremendous. And I said to him, but there's no spirit in that book. It's all about manipulating the universe. And he said, you know, you're right. If, if we were to do it again, I would incorporate more spirit, more connection with the essence. But I know when I first discovered affirmations, I was like, man, I am so magnificent. I am all-knowing. I am so powerful. I am so blessed. I kind of felt like this guy. <laughs> kind of looks like Elton John, doesn't it, in a way? <laughs> and, and, and then I thought it was kind of funny because people started to ignore me. You know, it's like I'd go off on my tangent about all these great things I was, and people were leaving. So I'm, you know, <laughs> I don't want that to happen. So, you know, when you're using your affirmations, you have to use some spiritual sense and make it not come from your ego. Because a lot of times affirmations can come right from our ego for this is what I want because I want to be the best, I want to be more powerful. Instead of tuning into spirit and asking, what is it that would be for the highest good of my soul, for my spirit, for my life, and for the world? (laughs) I love that guy. (laughs) So... Affirmations help us to move from the place where this guy is, where we're all worried and concerned, and help us to raise that vibration and move out of that space. So our affirmation today is, oh, I created this affirmation because um, I think it's a kind of a generic affirmation that we can use that really connects us with our heart and our soul and to put into practice some of the things we're talking about today. And let's say it together. I am in awe of the wonderful world I am creating. Can you feel that? Wow, because that's, I like that because this is not about ego, right? I'm not doing this to make myself look better, be better. It's just, I am in awe the wonderful world I am creating. Let's say it together. I am in awe of the wonderful world I am creating. And, uh, 
And here's, this, here's how we transform from the guy with his head down to this guy, totally in awe of the world that he is a part of and creating. I come alive as I raise my vibe. And the last thing, the fifth practice that we can use to raise our vibrational frequency is visualizations. Visualizations are so powerful because they engage our imagination to align our energy and emotions with the experiences and the outcomes that we desire. So visualization is is really about holding, visualizing, and it's more than that. I believe a powerful visualization is one that embraces feelings as well. It embraces emotions. So when we visualize, we, we can visualize what it is we want, and then how is it going to feel when we get that which we desire, when we become more loving, when we become more passionate? What does that feel like? What does it, think about it. What does it feel like for you or feel it for a moment? What does it feel like? What will it feel like when you become more loving? Can you feel that? I think loving is good because we can always experience more of it, can't we? So just feel for a moment, what does that feel like for you to be more open, to be more loving, to be more joyful? And breathe into that. Feel that. You know, when we engage in visualization, our subconscious mind doesn't recognize what we're actually experiencing, and what we're imagining. It thinks that they are the same thing. So when we visualize that which we desire, our mind is going, oh, I got that already, right? Oh, I know what that feels like. I can, I can sense that. And when we sense that, feel that, we become, again, part of the vibrational field, and we attract to us that which we are feeling and thinking and embracing and loving. Do you see the power in that? So I I like this lady. She's visualizing that she wants to travel the world. And so she's picturing all these amazing places in the world that she wants to visit. Anybody ever travel the world? Or, or go on a vacation and visualize the things that you're going to see when you go there, right? And if you do that, you know, in preparation for it, it helps you to, to connect with that vibration that attracts that to you. So in all of these things that we've talked about today, there are some challenges and some obstacles. And I know you're saying, oh, Rob, I don't want to hear about obstacles. I I don't want to hear about challenges. Well, the challenges and the obstacles are going to be time and consistency. Because a lot of times we think, um, you know, oh, I did this affirmation three times. That's enough, right? I I did the visualization twice. That's enough, right? I, I, I went to the beach, like you said, and I, I em- embraced the things I was grateful for, and I, you know, I uh, let myself be at ease, and, and I did that twice. This is a lifelong journey. Don't you hate that part? This, this spiritual journey that we're on is lifelong. You know, we like to think, right, oh, I did it, I got it, I'm good, right? Boom! Ha-ha! I'm transforming, right? I'm enlightened. Unfortunately, <laughs> it takes work. <laughs> and so, and the, another part of that, it takes consistency, it takes time. Another part of that that sometimes feels uncomfortable is if you want change and you do these things, to get change, what's going to happen? 
What's going to happen? You're going to change, right? Oh, and don't we just love change, right? I, I know for me, when I got on this path, I found that I had some of my best friends were toxic, right? I found some of my best friends weren't positive, that complained all the time, that were angry all the time, right? And I, I had to say to myself first and then to them, I love you, but I need to be with different people, right? I need to be with people that are positive and uplifting. I didn't tell them all of that, but I did choose to sort of let people slip out of my life because it didn't work for me, right? If we're going to be in a clear, loving space, sometimes we have to get rid of the toxicity in my life or in our lives, right? To, to really look at what are the things that we're doing. Are we embracing the truth that we want to embody? It takes work. It feels uncomfortable, right? We're gonna, I, I can remember showing up at gatherings with my friends and sitting there and thinking, I just don't feel good here anymore. You know, I don't want to sit around and complain about life. I don't want to moan and gripe and make fun of people, right? That's just not my style. I want to love people. You know, this growth that we are anticipating and encouraging and working on is going to cause us to change. Thank God. Sometimes it feels uncomfortable. Sometimes it hurts. But the reward of lifting our vibration, the reward of being um, enlightened, right? Enlightened because we've let go of the stuff that held us down is going to be so much more satisfying, so much more real, so much more powerful. Have you ever heard of uh, Gabrielle Bernstein? Anybody ever heard of her? She's a motivational speaker, life coach, and author who's been spreading the principle of um, high-vibe living uh, for over a decade. And before she became, before she started living like this, she uh, was addicted to drugs, alcohol, the toxic relationships, and was constantly seeking the validation from other people. And when she hit rock bottom, she was like, I don't want to do this anymore. She began to do the, the things that we're talking about, meditating, practicing gratitude, surrounding herself with healthy people, with high vibe people, focusing on raising her vibration. And as a result, she, she's helped many hundreds and hundreds of people to transform their lives, to teach them, to encourage them to live differently. She um, uh, is known for the, the idea that the universe has your back. Wow, I love that. To me, that means, you know, when we raise our vibration, we become one with this quantum field that's everywhere, right? And the universe has our back because we are acting with it in our high vibration to be that vibration. And when we're in that vibration, the universe says, oh, yeah, I recognize you. Welcome home. This is who you are. I recognize you. You are a field of energy and light and power and peace and prosperity and joy. Breathe into that. Feel that. So when you, like Gabby, choose to take power over your life, to raise your vibration, to raise your frequency, you become a vibrating power of love, a being that is vibrating and transcending and transforming wherever you are. And you bring that vibration everywhere you are. And you will experience more love, more peace, 
more joy, more power, and more life. Yeah? Yeah. I come alive as I raise my vibe. (laughs) Namaste. I invite you to close your eyes. Mm, Breathing in. And in this quietness, I invite you to imagine that you are one with the universal vibration. You are one with all life. You are one with the power of spirit and joy. Imagine that you're letting go of doubts, fears, and hatred, anger, and just gently letting it go. It may have served you at one time, but now you get to make a different choice to let go. Breathing in and breathing out. Just allow yourself to feel the essence of life that is the truth of who you are. This vibration that's in every cell, every space, every tissue, every thought, every feeling of vibration of joy. And imagine and picture and visualize that this vibration is moving through every cell of your being, every thought, every feeling. And breathe into that. Imagine yourself as part of the universe, part of the energy of love, light. And let's take just a moment to experience this in the silence. Breathing in and breathing out. Gently allow your high vibrational self to return to this moment as a being of love and light, truth and power and joy. Breathing in. And breathing out. And I invite you to gently open your eyes and bring yourself back into this moment. And so it is. And I'd like to invite you now to prepare your love offerings for Unity on Maui. And, um, and as you hold your love offerings, I invite you to be grateful for the gift that you have that you get to share with us. Um, to be grateful for um, who you are. Who you are in mind, body, and spirit. And to appreciate and, and just really embrace with awe how wonderful it is to be alive how wonderful it is to 
to be able to share this lifetime with so many people and how grateful you are for the transforming power of spirit that's moving in and through you. And from Unity on Maui, we thank you for your gifts because you participate with us through your gifts in this amazing work that we do to um, lift the consciousness of those of us who are here and, and I believe the consciousness of the island and the world. So as we... No. So as you hold your gifts, uh, let's pray this affirmation together. Let's say it together. Through a grateful, oh, giving, giving heart, heart my mind, mind and life overflow with the abundance of God's all-providing, supply. infinite supply. And so it is. Namaste. Hmm, loving Spirit, give thanks for these gifts that have come to us in love. We hold them, we bless them, we give thanks for them. And know that they're moving in and through this ministry and out into the world. And we behold a high frequency world, one that we bring our love to, our passion to, our consciousness to. And we behold a world that is filled with life, with peace, with joy, and with love. And so it is. Namaste. And I want to give a shout out to our chaplains who did the service for us last week and to thank them for their um, amazing consciousness and all that they did. So uh, Adam, Adam was here, Marlene was here, and I think that Christine and Patricia... And Carol, all here delivered our message last week, and I'm so grateful for them that I can uh, that I can go away on vacation and I can uh, leave um, this ministry in their amazing prayer consciousness. And thank you for being here for them and for that. All right, uh, let's see a couple announcements. If you'd like to bring flowers on Sunday morning. Um, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. If you put your pick a date, put your name down, and tell me who you'd like the flowers dedicated to uh, for a birthday or for anniversary or just for the love of spirit everywhere, uh, we'd be happy to have them appear on Sunday morning. And, and the best part is you get to take them home with you uh, when you leave. Oh, we have coffee? We have coffee? It Wow. Huh. So, in case you didn't hear, you know, there's been there's been a, some upsurgence here of wanting uh, some coffee on Sunday and maybe some snacks or whatever. And I was just informed by Kaloha and I see them being set up outside. And so in the essence of being together and celebrating together, there's coffee and some finger food outside. So please help yourself after the service. You can't leave now. <laughs> right? I know there's some people who are like, I'm out of here. <laughs> Just a moment. Just a moment. Okay, we're almost there. So um, next week, I start, I'm starting a five-week series uh, based on this uh, New York Times best-selling book. Um, atomic Habits, and um, so I'm taking the essence of this book, and I'm blending in some spiritual truth, and I'm calling it Atomic Habits for Spiritual Evolution. I'm going to do a five-week series on the spirituality of, of this book, and I, I think it's so, um, I must say, spirit is a genius through me. Because um, it's going to take the, the things that we talked about today, right, and help us to instill them as atomic habits in our lives. 
so that we can, you know, so that we will be encouraged not just to take these ideas home and practice them once, but to create a lifetime of a spiritual practice. And my talk next Sunday is titled Small The Power of Atomic Habits. So that'll be happening at 10 o'clock for the next five Sundays. So please come. It's going to be a lot of fun and very transformational. And uh, if you enjoyed my talk today and you're wondering, God, how in the world am I ever going to remember all that? I got you back. Because I created what I call a walkie-talk, kind of a summary of everything I talked about today. There's copies back there. If we run out, let me know. I'll make some more. Because, the, you know, this, this, this is it's great to sit and listen to this stuff, uh, but it doesn't mean a darn unless we apply it in our lives, right? So I want to make that as easy as possible for all of us. So that's back by the door, right where Kailani is, right there. And uh, with that being said, I, I'm so grateful for all of you being here today and holding the space with us, creating the service with us. Why don't we stand and we'll pray the prayer for protection. And then after we finish that, we'll join a circle around the parameter and we'll uh, sing together the peace song. So for ourselves, for this ministry, for the world, let's affirm and pray the prayer for protection together. Together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us wherever we are. God is. God bless you, friends. Let's.